Pastor John Paul Miller is now breaking his silence regarding the death of his wife, Micah Miller, who many are saying is still very suspicious despite the medical examiner's report, despite you know the investigation by the Robeson County Sheriff's Department. So what is exactly JP saying about this whole thing? We're going to dive in and discuss in just a second. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you, as always, that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story. How did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. Also, if you enjoyed, appreciate my work of my ministry here, and you can donate then help me out. There's a few different ways you could do that. One, you could just hit the super thanks button on the YT video here or join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Link in the description. And when you join Patreon, you're going to get all these videos before they ever hit the main YT platform along with several other cool features that Patreon provides. I hope you'll join me over there. Check it out. Patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Let's get into this. There has been a lot involving Micah Miller, the suspicious death. We know this occurred on April 27th. Since then, we have heard from both the medical examiner as well as the Robeson County Sheriff's Department, both of which have concluded that Micah Miller took her own life. Surveillance footage we know that shows Micah going in to buy a 9mm at a pawn shop. We know about the 911 call that she gave prior to her passing. So all of this has come out. However, at the same time, many are still refusing to believe that this is how Micah truly passed away, including her own family. Now, we know about the affidavits that were submitted by both her sister, Sierra Francis, and her brother, Nathaniel who both allege that Micah was being mistreated in the marriage by JP. In fact, several police reports were filed by Micah uh, several weeks before her death that you know alleged that JP had slashed her tires, that he had put tracking devices on her vehicle to try and have people to find her. There was claims about blackmail and, and, and hires that he was making for people to follow her. Now, her brother Nathaniel had actually received an email, he actually included this in his affidavit from JP that stated that he admitted to actually having the tires slashed and having her followed and that, you know, when somebody hurts him, his goal is to hurt them back, not to forgive them, which is interesting because, well, it's on the, the walls of their church, Solid Rocket Market Common, and you wouldn't think that you would be hearing a pastor talking about not wanting to forgive and trying to extract revenge and trying to hurt somebody else. It just doesn't really add up at all. But that was the email that Nathaniel had received. He included that. We know about how assets were starting to move around while Micah was in a mental institution. So all of these nefarious things, you know, JP's, you know, new love interest, Susie Skinner, I talked about her. You know, he was seen with her just days after Micah's death. And, well, now JP is speaking out. We know that he's he's on a, a little bit of a break right now from Solid Rock. Whether or not he returns to ministry or not, I do not know. I don't think that based off everything that has come out about him that he could ever return and ever be respected in any way. I just don't. I mean, even, you know, his past criminal activity has now been put out there uh, from the first marriage. I've talked about that before. But now he's speaking out, kind of, but through his lawyer. Now, his lawyer has now come out and is starting to threaten lawsuits about the false information and the rumors that are going around out there about JP. And the lawyer is now pushing back on claims that JP had in any way prepped Micah, and I'm using that word prepped for obvious reasons, that he had prepped her from the time that she was in the youth group. Now, the lawyer pushes back on this and says that there is no way that JP could have done this, that he could have prepped Micah, because as the lawyer claims, some are saying that he was prepping her from the time that she was 10. 
He says that that's false because he claims that Micah moved to Myrtle Beach when she was 15, and then she was married when she was 18, and then divorced by the time that she was 21. Now, don't forget, JP did admit in an interview with the Christian Post that the relationship between himself and Micah started off in adultery. They were both married to somebody else at the time that that relationship had started. But again, they are pushing back on the claims that JP was, you know, prepping her from the time that she was in the youth group until the time that they are married. They said that those claims are baseless, that it has caused, you know, great harm to JP and his family for all these things that people are saying about him that are not true. And also, the lawyer is saying that based off the medical examiner's report, along with the Robeson County Sheriff's Department investigation, this completely exonerates JP 100% from having anything to do with Micah Miller's death. Now again, you can go back and look at all the information since you know this whole thing has started. JP's past behavior, his tendencies, his involvement with other women. They're also pushing back on claims that he mistreated her in the marriage in any way whatsoever. But again, look at the affidavits of, you know, Micah's sister who talked about how, you know, Micah always talked about fearing for her life. So, so you got you got two opposing sides here. And no doubt, I would fully expect that Micah's family in, in some way or another actually, you know, might be filing a lawsuit of their own. You know, they're JP's lawyers talking about lawsuits and all this, but I would expect that the family is probably prepping one of their own right now. Uh, so... This whole thing is just, again, it continues to be just a huge stain on the church as a whole. You know, as more and more of these pastors come under fire for these things, you know, it just, again, it's causing people to turn away from the church. I always tell people, if you can get yourself involved in a home church, please do. Stay away from these, you know, these big modern mega churches today because of everything that we see that comes out of them, it's just... It's unbelievable. But to say that, you know, JP, just completely innocent in this whole thing, just did nothing wrong, can't in any way be tied to Micah's behavior. Uh, I, I just, I, I can't see that. I just can't at all. Uh, so we'll see again where this all goes from here. I want to hear from you guys, though. You can leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. What do you think here by the claims of uh, JP and his lawyer pushing back you know, against the false information that, you know, he in any way had prepped Micah, was involved in any way in her death. Uh, what do you think happens to Solid Rock Church from this point forward? You know, how long is JP staying away? Is it going to be for just a short time? Is it going to be for a permanent time? Uh, let me know. And again, if you enjoy and appreciate the work of this ministry, you can help me out with the donation. Hit the super thanks button here on the YT video or join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash NotBySightNews. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing here in the church and exposing the false prophets, we always want to give people that opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. So for anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer that you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. I appreciate everybody for watching. Again, your comments, your thoughts, 
all welcome down below. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you, and I'll talk. Be soon.